Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here, and in this tutorial we are going to be looking at how to put 3D objects over a photograph and make them feel part of the environment. Now, you will need some form of image in order to do this. Um, the clearer the image that you have, the sort of better it will be, and the more sort of leading lines you can put in that show the perspective of your image, then the easier your computer will be able to match that across. Okay, so let's get going with it. So the first thing you need to create is a camera, and that's just a standard Cinema 4D camera. And then go to Tags, Cinema 4D, and we're going to use this Camera Calibrator tag. This is what will tell Cinema 4D the angle that the camera is based on the image that we have. So click your Camera Calibrator tag, and then go to Image. And then we are going to pick the image. Now the one I used in our example was that one. So that's the one that I'm going to use again. So click open, there we go. And if you've got different aspect ratios and things like that, or, or you know exactly how it was created, you know, then click it and you'll see that your, your, your image will change. Um, so just be aware of that. Got image scales as well, which you can edit and adjust depending on if you want to change or shrink or change, you know, work with the image. And again, you can lower or increase the brightness. There we go. So you can do a full image map. Um, and then that works with what we've got here. Okay, and that just adjusts the image to your sort of screen size. Then we go to calibrate. And the easiest thing to do is to add a grid. And this creates this 3D perspective grid. And this is what we use to match the perspective of our image. So you grab your little points just by clicking and then dragging and you map them to various points that you think are going to work with your perspective, which for in this example is going to be the table. And it's just a simple case of clicking and dragging. You can see that you get a nice little magnification. So you can really, you know, pin those tags in and you can work with the perspectives. So let's just, yeah, that goes off the screen. So let's just use half the table. That's not a problem. There we go. And you can see that that maps in quite nicely. Now, we've got quite a good little map here and you can you just sort of use the grid and roughly sort of see if they're still in perspective if they're all working properly the way you'd expect a parallel sort of perspective grid to work now we need to tell the computer which axes these are working on and to do that you hold down the shift button and you click one of the edges you can see that they highlight and now if i click you can see that that has turned red to for me to show that indicate that that is the X axis, which is exactly what I want. Now if I press again, you can see it goes green. It now thinks that that might be the Y axis. That is not what I want it to be because that's going to be the X and Z plane. So to change that, simply hold down shift and click again. And there we go and boom, that changes to the X and Z plane. So now what I can do if I look through that camera, it should have adjusted its perspective for me. And then I can create background object. So then what I want to do, let's try and test our perspective by creating a cube. So let's create a cube and we'll see where it's put it in our world. Okay, so it's put the camera over there. So if I just move the cube to that angle, you can see that I now have a cube that looks like it's mapping to that table, or at least in the perspectives of it anyway, which is absolutely fine. Okay, so that's cool. And if I render it, it looks a little bit flat at the moment, which isn't a problem because I haven't finished yet. So what I need to do is I need to add a table top that will allow some sort of shadow to be cast on here by the cube. And that's relatively easy again, so just create a plane. And I'm just going to move that into the perspective again. Ooh. And you simply map the size out to roughly how big you want your table, you know, your tabletop should match. So there's a little bit of sort of guesswork here, but it will all, you know, sort of pan itself out with some hard work there. Now, if I render that, that's got no texture on it whatsoever, which is no help for me. So what I want it to do is to have the tabletop texture. 
And the easiest way to do that is to take our nice texture created by the background object, which as you can see is a nice frontal projection, and copy it onto the plane. And to do that, command or control drag onto the plane. There we go. And that is now got that texture. But as you can see, it's a bit dark and doesn't quite give me the same sort of effect. So I need to add another tag. And that tag is a compositing tag. And what that does is it gives us some options as to how this actually composites into the scene. And the thing we are going to tick is compositing background. So now if I render, it disappears, but it will have an effect as being used for shadows and light sources and things like that. Now I need to add a light source. Now the light sources in here are the lights above and behind. And we can kind of cheat with that by making this image produce the light sources for us. So to do that, I'm going to create a sky, which as you can see, overwrites my background completely, but I can sort that out in a minute. And then I'm going to just call that one uh, background. And then I'm going to make a copy of this, okay? Which as you can see is this one, it's because it's not assigned to anything. And this one I'm going to call light. So because we've got an image in our scene already, we can go to our luminance channel, put a tick in the box, and then under our textures, we can choose the image that's already there. And that's that image. And I'm just going to unselect color. And that gives us a nice bright luminant channel that will produce the lighting for our scene. And you can rotate it around if you particularly want to. Um, you can move your sky object or your textures around depending on you know how you want it to look. But again, I don't want to be able to see this, so I'm going to use that same compositing tag, and I'm going to put it, oh, untick the scene by camera, which removes that whilst, uh, removes it from being able to be seen whilst still allowing it to have an effect on the scene through the light source. But if I render, it's not part of it yet. So what I need to do is I just go to my render settings and I add my two favorite things, ambient occlusion and global illumination. Okay, and now if I render, you can see that it thinks about it for a little bit. And we should get, if I move my cube further onto that plane, okay, and click render, you can see that we actually get a little bit of shadow here, an ambient occlusion around that you know, the bottom of that cube, and it starts to look like it's part of that scene. Although why you have a cube in this scene, you know, is uh, anybody's guess, but let's just, um, you know, place that a little bit further in and click render. Boom, we've got a strange black cube there. Not a problem. But what about other objects? Well, let's try. I'm gonna go to my content browser and I'm going to search for uh, a glass of some sort, uh, depending on what you have in your content browser, will of course depend on what you can see here. And I'm going to uh, pick just a nice tall sort of glass. There we go. And double click that. I just need to move it into my camera area and then move it up a bit. Okay, it's a little bit tiny. So let's uh, just increase the size of that. Okay, now you can use your um, perspective views and your maps and your, um, oh, sorry, you can use your perspective views to map your stuff to where it needs to be. And then let's just try, see if that's where it is. Render, there you go, boom. That glass is now sitting its way on there. So you might need to adjust it a little bit. And if I move it there and maybe a little bit further back so you can see that it's over one of those desk things. And there you go. Look, that glass even is able to, you know, refract the stuff on the desk behind. And it's that simple. It was that easy to just sort of throw in. Um, you can see what else I did. Let's try the TV. So let's stick a flat screen TV in there. Why not? Everybody needs a flat screen TV. Um, and then adjust the angle. Let's make sure that it marries up to the um, size. It is a bit tiny at the moment. There we go. And where is it in relation to everything? There we go. What about sitting on that? Yeah, it's quite nicely on that plane. 
So there we go. I've now got a TV in the back. Let's have a quick render and see what that looks like. Oop, press the button. There you go. We've got a TV in that scene. It was that easy to just throw some objects in um, using the light sources to get some realistic sort of looking lights and you know using those tags to be able to allow these to have an effect without necessarily being visible to us. Okay, I hope that was a useful tutorial for you in being able to put 3D objects onto a uh, photograph and I will catch you next time.